Here's part four of our cover story series, Behind the Wheel. Dick? Well, when dance fever regular and St. Louis native Janet Jones heard that Merv Griffin was looking for a new co-host for his Wheel of Fortune show, she introduced Merv to her friend Vanna White. Well, the rest we know is history. Tonight, Channel 5's entertainment reporter J.C. Corcoran of KC Radio talks with the person who has one of the easiest jobs in show business. Now explain that to me. What's the appeal of the uh, Flintstones? Wait, 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 wait. It's a typical day in the life of the First Lady of Wheel of Fortune. Vanna White, in her dressing room, all dressed up with some place to go, shows off some fan mail. Yabba dabba doo, Vanna, this letter's to you. <laughs> and that's the envelope. Then you open it up and see... Isn't this cute? Hey, Barney, I mean, he... forget bowling. We're watching Vanna White on Wheel of Fortune. Isn't this cute? Speaking of cute, if it's even possible, Vanna seems more attractive in person than she looks on television. Although, for one brief moment, in the makeup room after dinner, we thought we had caught her spotting an imperfection. Not tonight. You know what it is? I think. I think. <laughs> Vanna White is obviously one of the reasons people watch Wheel of Fortune, and she's become front page news in the process, even if it's been mostly in the tabloids. I laugh. Recently, I read that um, I had a new, a new love in my life, which I was, uh, I was, taking, I was at a, a, a party for a network station, and my picture was taken with this person. So now we're in love, that we spend three to four days a week together. I wish I had three or four days free time a week. The poster that you did was very, very successful, but a lot of people bought it and looked at it and maybe expecting a little bit more. Why did you do it the way you did? Because I'm a shy girl. I can't show off that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, I just, I wanted to do blue jeans in the hay. That is what I thought of myself as being. But the marketing geniuses missed the boat when they failed to include some sort of Vanna White cutout with this Wheel of Fortune home game. I know, and I'm not even on the box cover either. Why is that? They I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, really. I just, I know that the game is doing well, and it seems like I should be part of it, but I'm not. On the set, despite rumors of a rift, White and Pat Sajak appear to have the best of relationships. Despite all the glamour you see, Vanna is probably the most down-to-earth person you'd want to meet. I mean, I have seen her run around these hallways in hair curlers, you know, while she's getting ready. No other young starlet would ever be seen dead in anything, you know, a thing less than full makeup. She's a, she could be a real easy target, you know, for parody and people having fun with her. Uh, but she doesn't go out there and say, oh, I love mankind, and oh, I, you know, this is a wonderful... She goes out there and says, hey, I'm a letter-turner. And once she's done that, she's really diffused the humor there because she knows it's kind of funny. And she takes her job very seriously, but she knows that we're all, you know, we're, I mean, we're all stealing the money here. Mm -hmm. Who are we kidding? Someday, though, the wheel may stop spinning, but it's not likely Vanna White will go hungry. I used to think I wanted to be a big movie star. And now that I've been on television in this position as playing Vanna White, playing myself, I kind of like it. I don't know if people will accept me as playing a different role. So I'm going to wait and see what's offered to me. Hopefully something will be offered. And um, maybe just commentating, doing something, being myself. But I'll take anything. Make me an offer I can't refuse. <laughs> For cover story, J.C. Corcoran, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Well, tomorrow night in the conclusion of J.C.'s series, we're going to meet the star... I guess he's the star of Wheel of Fortune, Pat Sajak. He called her a starlet, so I guess he is the star. <laughs> but, uh, I bought that game. I wanted some of those yeah. Vanna White costumes, and they don't come with a game either. I like her. She comes off very I well when too. she talks. I do, too. That's very how nice. I felt. Yeah. The television game show hosts the subject of ridicule by comedians over the years and an occupation generally perceived to fall in respect somewhere between used car salesman and dog catcher. But if that image is changing at all, it may be due to the efforts of one man. Dick? Well, Karen, in the first few years, Wheel of Fortune was just another entity in a long list of game shows making up TV's, well, what someone once called vast wasteland. Then Pat Sajak arrived on the scene, and in the final part of his cover story series, Behind the Wheel, Channel 5's entertainment reporter J.C. Corcoran of KC Radio says that's when things began to happen. Here's your host, Pat Sajak. Though he's sitting on top of the game show ratings heap right now, much like Ted Baxter, who started at that little 250-watt radio station, or Johnny Carson on the plains of Nebraska, Pat Sajak broke into the business in a largely unimpressive manner, radio, morning drive, in Saigon. That was weird. We used to, um, it was drive time, but people were driving, you know, armored personnel carriers and all that, but it seemed normal at the time. 
But these days, things are much different. And after 1,900 shows in less than five years, Sajak still beams with pride. We are the number one syndicated show in the history of television. If we lost a quarter of our viewers tomorrow tuned out, we'd still be the number one show. That's, that's how strong the show has been. Um, uh, about 42 million people a day watch the thing. And what's the goofiest thing he's seen while doing the wheel? You know, I keep waiting for something really goofy to happen, like a little old lady, you know, not let go of the wheel as she spins it and impale herself and, you know, be dragged around. And we, we're lucky that that hasn't happened yet. He loves chocolate. <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, that's about it. What you see is what you get. He's a very shy person. He's witty. He's very witty. I've learned a lot from him over the years. And we're not fooling around. Um, we are good friends, though. Like Carson, Cavett, Douglas, and Letterman, Sajak, who hails from the Chicago area, believes that it's that Midwestern upbringing that's at least partially responsible for his success. There's something to that. I, I don't exactly know why it was, but it has to do with, you know, you're not abrasive. Uh get away with a little more. I mean, Johnny Carson can make sort of an off-color joke, but it's okay because he's the farm kid and he's still smiling and he's sort of Peck's bad boy and that kind of thing. And, mm -hmm. I, and I can get away with that, too, for the, for the same reason. And, and I think that, uh, that that upbringing, whatever it is, whatever qualities that, that gives you, it does seem to serve us well. Now, for most TV game show hosts, after their big show hits the skids, they just move on to another show. But for Pat Sajak, you kind of have the feeling something better might be waiting for him. Boy, I don't know. I'm working on a, on, a, on a game show called Dialing for Broccoli, which is kind of, it's a pilot that I'm working on. I'd like to produce and actually be on it. It'll, it'll feature various vegetables, not only broccoli, but we had to pick one. No. Uh, you know, my feeling, I, I don't mean to sound too well-adjusted, but as long as I'm working, I'm happy. I mean, I started in television in 72, and I've not had one day out of work since, and that's a pretty good run. And I, and I started in radio in 67, so, I mean, I've, I've been around a while, and as long as I keep working and... You know, I enjoy this. There's no heavy lifting. It's a great job. You can find as many theories for the tremendous success of Wheel of Fortune as there are letters in the alphabet. Now, whether it's Pat or Vanna or just the game itself, about 42 million people tune in every day just to find out what's going on. And that, my friend, spells... Well, you figure it out. For Cover Story, J.C. Corcoran, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. And Pat Sajak, among other things we're told, used to be a weatherman at a TV station in Nashville, Tennessee, and once did an entire weather cast in a clown suit. No. Imagine. Well, we used to have a guy here that did that, you know, Cliff St. James, oh, Corky right. the Clown. He did it on a number of occasions. Yeah. Oh, but not our very serious meteorologist, Bob Richards. He'd and never do he anything like that. He might wear a funny tie now and then, but uh, his weekend planning forecast is coming up next. Yeah, but he takes so serious.